So welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Tejendra Veer Singh. Call me TV. And, uh, and we have an exciting talk today, Interacting Dynamical Systems Modeling for Science, Construction and Generalization. Uh, it is uh, presented by Dr. Chao Luo. Uh, <clears throat> so let me introduce you. Uh, uh, Dr. Luo is a postdoctoral researcher at UCLA Department of Computer Science. Previously, he received BS degree in mathematics from Nanjing University, Nanjing, China in 2017, and a PhD in the School of Mathematical Sciences from Peking University, Beijing in 2022. His research interest includes machine learning on graphs, dynamical systems, statistical models, and AI for science. So uh, let's welcome Dr. Luo and uh, Dr. Luo. Uh, thank you for your introduction. Um, please let me know if you cannot hear me clearly. Um, today, I'm going to talk about a very important problem in modern scientific machine learning about how to model interacting dynamical system in scientific applications. First, let's talk about some background. Machine learning is promising as pilot for scientists. For example, AlphaFold has been so effective in predicting protein folding and protein structure. A lot of graph neural networks have been proposed for drug discovery, and a single cell data integration methods have been incorporated um, in our genomic analysis. But can these machine learning approaches fully solve our real world problems? We start from the first example. We know that Alpha fold can be used to predict the 3D structure of proteins, but proteins are always moving. So if we only predict the static 3D structure of proteins, it is far from satisfactory. So we need to model the dynamic structure instead. Generally, we believe that dynam dynamics is the nature of the world. The real world is 4D instead of 3D. Actually, the problem of dynamic systems are pervasive and, uh, and important. Um, for example, if we want to check, track the trend of disease transmission, they can be considered as a dynamic system. If we want to understand the dynamics of proteins, we need to conduct molecular dynamic simulation. Also, dynamic system can be used to understand fluid dynamics or file dynamics. Lastly, the climate change and the winds all around the world can be also considered as a dynamic system. Moreover, modeling dynamic system can have huge impact if we can track the trend of disease transmission, we, um, we will have the government with a policy, uh, we will have the government with a policy analysis and the decision making. We know that molecular dynamic simulation will cost a lot of computational resources. So if we can build some data driven method for this, it can save a lot of computational costs. Lastly, if we can track the trend of climate change, it will prevent extreme weather and improve the quality of our life. So generally, we not only want to address these practical problems, we also want to provide a universal solution for interacting dynamics, for interacting system modeling. But how can we describe this interacting dynamic system? A typical way is to use graph. Here we have two different graph construction methods. The first is a distance-based graph. Here we can compare the distance between two atoms with a given threshold 
if their distance is smaller than the threshold, we can add an edge between them. The second is to use the prior knowledge. If we can have the prior knowledge of whether two objects can be can interact or not, we can have the knowledge base graph, like in some physical system, we can know whether two objects are connected. After constructing the graph, we introduce the formal definition of interacting dynamical system. We use uh, the graph, the graph uh, GT to describe the state of the system at different time step. Here V is the node state which collect all the objects, and the ET is the A state which can uh, which collect the state of uh, which collect all the ages. XT is a metric which collects the states of all the objects. We assume that the underlying system dynamics is driven by an ODE, where the evolution of the age is determined. Uh, the evolution of the objects is determined by all the object states and the age states. So in our problem. Given the historical trajectories at different time steps like T1 to T4, we aim to use a neural network to predict the trajectories from TS to TE. However, uh, developing an effective data-driven method for dynamic system is very challenging. Here, in this talk, we will focus on two different uh, problems uh, in this topic. The first problem is uh, uh, model construction. We know that since uh, there, are there are continuous spatial temporal correlations in the system, uh, they are so, so, uh, so it's highly complicated. So how to model this, um, high, uh, how to build high quality models to capture these complicated dynamics remain a challenging problem. And, uh, we, and the, second, uh, po the second problem we will talk today is the model generalization. We know that in a dynamic system, we will face environment change, which results from different temperatures, pressures, and viscosities. This environment change would bring serious distribution shift which will degrade the performance of our machine learning model. So we really need to enhance the generalization ability of our model to adapt to different environments. So let's uh, talk about, uh, start with uh, the part one, model construction. We we'll first introduce some prior, prior work for dynamic system modeling. This work usually use graph neural network to learn the spatial relationship in dynamic system. In particular, they feed the current state, like current state of all the objects like ST into the uh, graph neural network and uh, output the differences at the next time step. And then they can feed the output back to the input and use the uh, autoregulation method for the long-term prediction. However, we know that the underlying, uh, the underlying dynamical evolution could be continuous, but this work are discrete. So, uh, so uh, we have proposed a new method uh, called Hope High Order Graph OD, uh, we, uh, we to solve this problem. And uh, this problem we use a general generative model with variational inference. Our framework includes three different components, an encoder, graph OD, and a decoder. In the encoder, we can learn from the historical trajectories to generate the prior distribution at the initial state. And then we can sample from the prior distribution and feed the initial state into graph OD which can output the states at any time step. Finally, we use that decoder to output the future prediction. The whole framework 
can be optimized by maximizing the log likelihood of our observation, which can be transformed into able uh, with the variational inference. However, uh, uh, how, then we talk about uh, the detail of our hope. Our hope is based on two basic observations. The first observation is uh, high order non neighborhood semantics in uh, yeah, uh, is uh, is uh, is, uh, is very well uh, in in uh, trajectories so here so here we if we use standard graph neural network we will miss this important important non neighborhood semantics so our solution is to propose a, a twin graph, graph encoder. Here we first construct a temporal graph uh, which can connect uh, connect all the observations. Uh, uh, here each node represents the observation of an object at a given time step. The graph contains two types of edges, spatial and temporal edges. Then we use the first order uh, spatial convolution. Uh, at each layer, it, they embed the node semantic features into deep representations by, by uh, extracting the information for the first order neighborhood of each object. Uh, to adaptively uh, infer the interaction between this node and the, and the neighbors, we can use the attention mechanism during the convolution, convolution process. And the mo most important thing in our twin, twin uh, graph encoder is the second order part. Here we use the second order chip shape graph convolution and uh, L is uh, graph Laplacian and, uh, our, uh, and our twin branches can explore the spatial temporal relationships from complementary views to generate the sequence representation for initialization, we first combine both representation and then use the attention mechanism to aggregate these temporal uh, representations into uh, sequence representations for each object. From the sequence of the uh, representations, we can obtain the, uh, the uh, posterior distribution of the initial latent state representations. And then um, our second observation is uh, second order laws, especially dynamic laws are indispensable in these systems. For example, in some physical system, we will have Newton's uh, equation of motion, which basically follows the second order law. And we may also have some high order spatial uh, temporal relationships in real world dynamic systems. So here we did we we should design a model which can capture these high order correlations. So our solution is to propose a high order graph ODE. In our high order graph ODE, we will introduce a second order derivative on the left hand side. And on the and on the right hand side, we have a massive passing. Uh, we have a massive passing term and a natural recovery term. In the massive passing term, here t, uh, here hat t is the agency matrix, d hat is the degree matrix, and the wp is the learnable weight matrix. So basically, this massive passing term can as can aggregate the neighborhood information of each object. Minus ZT is a term for natural recovery, which can prevent the value of ZT from being too large. Then we can explain why we design this formulation. Uh, here we can connect our second order graph of D with the optimization perspective. To begin, we extend the momentum optimization algorithms to graphs. Here, uh, the updating rules can be written in this formulation. And the first term is the current state. The second term aims to aggregate the information from the neighborhood. The last term is the momentum term, which can capture the trend 
of the optimization. When lambda approaches zero, we can have our second order graph of D. We know that the momentum optimization algorithm can enjoy high efficiency. So we also conduct some experiments which shows that our second order graph of D model can also enjoy faster convergence rate. Another problem is how to implement our second order graph of D. Our solution is to transform our second order graph of D into an augmented first of D. Here we denote the derivative of ZT as RT, and then our second order graph of D can be transformed into two different ODEs. Uh, then if we combine ZT and uh, with this derivative into RT, then these two ODEs can be considered as augmented first order OD with respect, with respect to RT. Finally, we can solve our problem by classic first order OD solver. Lastly, uh, we can show that our second order graph OD is well defined by guaranteeing the uniqueness and the existence of the solution. This analysis can help us design the architecture of neural network since we always want to permit want to permit this this property during our uh, network design. Then we talk about some uh, some experiments. Uh, we use three basic data sets in our experiments. The first is the COVID-19 which contains daily tendency records from the Johan Hopkins University Center for System Science and Engineering. The second data set is a, a social network which models the uh, opinions from individuals to individuals uh, in a social network. And the last data set is spring, spring oscillator, which models a group of balls links with springs. And the location and the velocity vectors are adopted at the node orientation. This slide shows the result of the compare methods. Here we compile we compare our method with uh, a lot of state of art approaches, uh, include uh, LSTM, GRU, uh, NeuroD, uh, heavy ball NeuroD, uh, DGCRN, uh, message passing NeuroD, and CGOD. And we can find that our hope can always achieve best performance on these two data sets mostly. And uh, this table shows the ablation studies. Here we have four or uh, five different uh, model variants. The first variant is uh, hope without FC. It removes the first order spatial convolution and only use uh, the second order spectral uh, convolution in the encoder. And uh, the second model, ho uh, hope without uh, uh, Without uh, FO, it removes it removes the first order derivative by setting uh, the gamma in our previous uh, second order OD into zero, and uh, and the and the hope without uh, SC, it removes the second order uh, spectral convolution and only use the first order spectral convolution in the encoder, and the hope without uh, SO, it removes the turns. Uh, it's uh it uh yeah 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 oh uh thank you for the question uh hi Huang our yeah our method is a form of uh neural D but uh, we have extended the neural D into uh graph of D and uh, in this work we'll consider the second order uh the high order graph of D in in this work yeah, thank you for the question. Yeah, and uh, for the hope without uh, SC, it uh, uh, removes the second order spectral convolution and only use the first order spectral convolution in the encoder. And for the hope without SO, it removes the second order derivative in our graph of the evolution term. And we can find that uh, our uh, our full model 
can achieve the best performance in most cases, which evaluate that uh, the, the high order turn and the, the first order turn are both very important uh, when we model the evolution of the dynamo system. And uh, and we can we also have uh, uh we also have uh, applied our model to a predicted trend of COVID nineteen, and uh, we can see that our model always achieves less predictive error compared with the baselines in different settings, which validates the effective on um, the effectiveness of our method. We also conduct some visualization of our prediction. Uh, you can see that our prediction is very close to the ground truth. Um, we also introduced two different extensions of uh, of uh, uh, of the model construction. In the first extension, we want to answer our question: What if we don't have motivating relationships? Like in some financial systems, one news could be connected to different companies. But we know that in graphs, an edge only connect two different nodes. So our solution is to build a dynamical hypergraph where a half edge can connect more than two nodes. So based on our dynamic hypergraph, we have designed a model which can, which can integrate the hypergraph based on spatial temporal signals using the attention mechanism and it can accurately model the hypergraph-based dynamical systems. And in the second extension, we want to answer a question, what if we don't have structural information? So our solution is to generate the instance matrix or adjacency matrix from the data. Here we have the hidden features of different objects, and we learn from the hidden features to generate the graph uh, information, which can be used uh, for effective message passing on graph and or hypergraph. So we can update the structure information based on the updates, uh, updated hidden features in an iterative method. So we can um, briefly review the first part about graph, uh, about model construction. Here we first combine our neural D with uh, uh, graph neural network to describe the interacting dynamics. And then we introduced high order graph OD to enhance uh, the effectiveness and the efficiency. Finally, we solve our second order graph OD by transforming it into an augmented first order graph OD. And uh, then we can uh, solve it, use a basic neural D solver. Uh, in the part two, we will talk about uh, the model generation. Uh, we, we want to talk about what's the distribution shift in dynamic system. We know that in dynamic system, the environment could change, in, uh, including different temperatures, forces, viscosities, and the pressures. Here are two types of distribution shift in dynamo system. The first is a tem it's a temporal distribution shift within one system. And we can observe that the data distribution is different along with the time. And the second type of data distribution, uh, it's a, a second type of data distribution across different systems. For example, different physical systems may have different pressures. So we know that um, machine learning methods usually uh, have very poor performance uh, when it comes to distribution shift. So we really need to enhance the generalization ability to adapt to different environment in dynamic system modeling. First, we talk about the more, uh, continuous distribution shift where we can see the temperatures or the pressures could change along with the time. So to handle this issue, our solution is to model the, the continuous external context using a context variable CT to drive the evolution. 
to model the contact uh external con uh external context we use the context available CT to denote the environment at the time step T. So we can have a, a probabilistic model with two basic assumptions. The first assumption is about our prediction. So given the uh, so given the current state, we want to predict the future tra trajectories. And uh, here, the hi uh, historical trajectories is no longer related to our future trajectory prediction. So it's basically a mark of poverty. Based on this poverty, we can divide the whole training uh, sequence into two intervals, from zero to t minus k and t minus k to t. So we can use the first interval to infer the states of the objects and the environment variables. And then we predict the trajectories at the second interval. The second assumption is for content variable CT. Uh, we assume that the content variable CT is uh, continuously differentiable so that it can result in temporal distribution shift. So to make the model well defined, we assume that uh, the content variable CT is predict predictable with the last interval. So we can predict CT, the current, uh, the current environment context, using the state at the last interval from the time step t, uh, t minus k to t, and uh, and the uh, and the uh, content variable at at the last state c t minus k, and then we can divide the last interval into a lot of smaller intervals. Following this idea, we can use the OD to model the evolution of the contact variable. So our basic idea is to incorporate both uh, interacting dynamics and external context into neural D. So in our scenario, the dynamics of systems is modeled by both the neighborhood interaction and the content variables simultaneously. So we can have this formulation. The first part uh, is from the neighborhood interaction, and the second part is from the context. Based on our idea, we propose a new method coupled by 4D. So in our model, we drive the evolution of the dynamic system using the neighborhood objects and the contact implementations. We can see that uh, the first turn is a graph neural network, which can capture the neighborhood interaction. And the second turn is from the neighborhood variable. So we use two learnable metrics, W1 and W2, to combine them, and they can jointly drive the evolution of the objects. More importantly, we model the content available with another OD model. Here, the evolution of the content available is determined by the summarization of the, all the objects' presentations and their trends. Finally, we jointly solve this coupled OD with neural OD solver and output our prediction. Uh, and finally, we, we uh, use a decoder to generate our, uh, our predicted trajectories. So uh, given the ground truth, we can minimize the uh, mean square error of the predicted tra trajectories. Moreover, we require both the node and the content implementations to be robust to different noise attack and to improve the robustness of the OD system under, uh, under distribution shift so we can have our final loss. We conduct our experiments on different fluid dynamic data sets and compare with the different baselines our method can achieve the best performance under the temporal distribution shift, which can validate that our our superior uh, out of distribution performance. We also have some uh, visualization on fluid dynamics, so we can also validate it from our our visualization since our prediction is more close to the ground truth.
We also conduct some uh, po uh conduct some other experiments like we can we study the um performance with respect with respect to different condition lengths, uh and uh, with different uh, intervals. So we can see that our per our prediction is always um uh, better than uh previous model CGOD, and uh, we can see that our performance is also efficient in uh in terms of uh, the time. Then we can uh, introduce our second scenario, cross system distribution shift. For example, in these uh, physical systems, we can have different environment, such as different pressures and strengths. So this different environment will cause different uh, data distributions. So a basic solution is to train one model for each environment, but uh, unfortunately it's not efficient. So our solution is to learn a general model which can be adapted to different environments. To achieve this, our core idea is to ex uh, extract environment patterns and environment patterns. Um, so here we use uh, representation distanglement to learn from the uh, historical trajectories by uh, minimizing the mutual information between the invariant patterns and the variant patterns so that the, the variant patterns would not influence the invariant patterns during the environment change. Moreover, in our problems, uh, the invariant patterns are connected to the system parameters so we will minimize, maximize the mutual information between the environment patterns and the system parameters. From the variant patterns, we can generate the system, uh, the system level orientations, uh, which correspond to different environments. But from the environment patterns, we also generate the object level orientations, which can capture the individual uh, uh, features of different objects. Another question is uh, how to model this interacting dynamics consider both individual characteristics and the system parameters. A very naive solution is to use the individual graph neural networks for different objects, but it definitely uh, would in, uh, introduce too many parameters and the results in our fitting. So our solution is to decompensate the whole graph neural networks into different base, bases, and each base can be considered as a GM prototype. Then the evolution of each object can be modeled by the, the combination of these GM prototypes. And then the weights can, is, determined by, uh, is determined from the system orientations and uh, and uh, object orientations to tackle potential distribution shift. Then we can introduce our formal PGOD model. Here we learn from the historical tra trajectories to generate object level orientations and system level orientations, which can guide our D to output the hidden states at uh, any time step. Finally, we use a decoder to output our future predictions. What's more, we show that our PGOD is more powerful as well because it follows the principle of mixture of experts. Here, we have uh, here each GM um, prototype can be considered as an expert in you know, MOE formal, and the WIK can act as the gauging weight which control the contribution of different experts. But differently, our WIK comes from the hierarchical context, which can handle the distribution shift as well. Finally, we have conducted some experiments uh, in both in distribution settings and uh, out of distribution settings. We can see that our model performs much better than baseline in the in distribution setting which can validate that our model is more powerful. And the, the, sim, the similar observation can be found in the out of distribution settings, which can validate the higher, the strong generation ability of our model. 
Lastly, our model can capture the continuous evolution of these objects, which is more close to the ground truth uh, to underline a data generation mechanism of the physical simulation. We also have some uh, simple visualizations from the visualization of the physical system. We can see that our prediction is very close to the ground truth in the order of distribution setting. We also have a very simple case uh, of molecular dynamics. And we can see that our model can also generate accurate molecular dynamic simulation close to the ground truth. Um, then we briefly review the second part. We first observe, uh, observe that the environment, uh, the environmental variant uh, could uh, bring serious uh, distribution shift within one system and across different system. Then we use coupled graph OD to model the object states and the context, uh, and the context states simultaneously for the temporal distribution. Lastly, we adopt the representation distanglement and the prototypical graph OD to the interacting dynamics across different systems. Um, finally, we have uh, uh, we will briefly review the uh, applications of uh, dynamical system uh, of the of dynamical system modeling. Overall, our framework can be used in different areas, including health, molecular biology, genomics, fluid mechanics, and uh, and uh, more mo uh, We have used our model to predict and uh, control the trend of disease transmission. And we have also conducted a data-driven molecular dynamics simulation using our framework. And we can also use our framework to infer RNA velocity to understand the dynamics, um, but it's an ongoing project. We can also do the physical simulation to understand the fluid dynamics. Lastly, we can also use our uh, we can also use our model to predict the future weather or the most dynamics. dynamics. Um, in our future, in our future work, we have uh, uh, three basic uh, future directions. The first, uh, the first uh, motivation is uh, equivalent graph neural network can work well with the genomic uh, space. So our solution is to uh, build some equivalent models for continuous interacting dy dynamic systems. So in our future work, we will first analyze the systems with domain knowledge and define the equivalence. And then we can design and approve the equivalence of the propagation. Finally, we use the, the experiment to validate our effectiveness. This about the second uh, our future direction. Uh, we know that fundamental model uh, fun, uh, fun, uh, fundamental model have shown very effective performance on zero shot uh, 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 scenarios. So in the future work, we will build some fundamental models for dynamic system modeling. So we first we are uh, start uh, we first we are. Uh, use prompt learning, so we incorporate like different system parameters uh, and the historical data into prompt, and to find to fine tune them uh, and to train the prompt. And our second uh, uh, solution is to uh, use large use use large scale uh, fine tuning, uh, and it can fit uh, our large scale system data into foundation models, and then. We can use some effective uh, fine tuning strategy, and uh, in the end, we can result. Uh, in the, in the end, we can result in a very strong fundamental model, which has uh, some uh, some powerful uh, generalization ability. Uh, as for the future applications, we know that molecular dynamic simulation will require we are require um, extensive computational resources. So we really aim to uh, build some data-driven method to accelerate the simulation. 
Um, but uh, here we have a lot of challenges. First, uh, we, we can see that <clears throat> the molecular systems has uh, uh, has a large numbers of atoms. So we so scalability is the first challenge. And then um, because we need the whole trajectories of the biological entities, so we are required to generate a long-term prediction. Lastly, we know that the, system, the whole system is highly complicated, so it's really difficult to capture the spatial temporal correlations. So in the future work, we will first try to build some large-scale foundation models, use pump learning or fine-tuning, and uh, incorporate these foundation models in our molecular dynamic simulation. Maybe some you you know some like uh, we can name a model like uh, foundation model for uh for MD, and then we can use some statistical tools such as the Shapley value and the vector models to enhance the inter interoperability of the black box model. Yeah, th uh, thank you for your listening. This is my um whole whole talk. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, any questions? Uh, please raise your hand. Um, okay, uh, Chiang has a, a comment. Uh, let me let me check. Please share some information about implement. Yeah, we use uh, we use PyTorch to implement our our method yeah uh we, we we don't use any higher level higher level library because you you know we uh, usually we use pytorch Geo geographic and uh, the neural d server because uh we have a very uh very solid package to solve the neural d so you can use uh, um uh the the pattern geometric to build some graph neural network and uh, you, you can use uh, the package of neural d solver to solve the whole graph of d thank you for your question any other questions uh, it's a really nice talk i just have a question about how you tell me more about details how you use models in terms of um uh, like simulate uh, molecular structures how like yeah kind of this dynamic of um, molecular you mean like uh, molecular dynamic simulation yeah how yeah just some like kind of details procedures and what well, kind of um, first, uh, we can build some graph, some temporal, uh, some graph based on like uh, we can compare the uh, distance between atoms with some threshold to um, to um, to have the graph, and then we can uh, feed the, uh, then we can feed the, some like we 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 generate some historical trajectories. We don't, we don't use uh, like uh, like one snapshot to predict uh, the trajectories. We we just uh, like uh, uh, we generate the trajectories so at the different times uh, time step like like t ten time steps and feed uh, this uh, uh historical trajectories into the graph of the framework and then we can output our our prediction. Yeah. So like uh, the so so I I think the first part uh is uh yeah graph construction and second part is our inputs. Yeah. yeah. Thank for the training, what kind of input? Uh, uh, our input includes uh, all the node uh, positions, like uh, the positions of different atoms and uh, the velocities of different atoms. And uh, we can predict uh, the velocity at the different time step. Yeah, so we like we download the whole PDB, uh, PDB file, and we uh, simulate the uh the protein. Here you can see it's a very uh simple protein. We simulate uh, we uh simulate the protein in the co uh, in the Cosmos software, and we then we can generate the uh, the trajectories. Yeah, like we can have the uh, position and the velocity of different uh, atoms. Thank you for your question. I have a question. Um, so in these uh, physical models, uh, 
when we do the simulation uh, in a classic way, a uh, lot of efforts go because computations are 64 bit based. Mm. Uh, uh, I mean, you mean, you mean it costs a lot of continual call cost, cost? I'm not sure. Um, uh, I, I'm sorry. So mm -hmm. every variable will be declared as a double precision or 64-bit uh, representation in those calculations. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, here, is it 32-bit uh, uh, or uh, lower than that? Uh... You mean you mean the like the molecules like the uh time step interval of the of the step simulation? intervals the representation of temperature or pressure? In the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like we use different temperatures and uh, and pressures. We we have to uh like uh, like uh if we use different temperature and pressure, we can have different uh, um trajectories. So like in this work, we enhance the generation ability so we can adapt to different environments. Okay. Yeah, thank you for the question. Thank you. And any other questions? Uh, uh, Chiang? Oh, hi. Uh, I, I remember you showed a slide that uh, there are future directions. So you, you would like to have something work with uh, uh, with the large language models, like a uh, chat GPT or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, can you? Uh, is there any like? Uh, I I'm just curious how 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 you how you could possibly or propose to use the uh like a large language models to your to your model uh to to your like a dynamic system modeling. Is there anything that you already have the data like graphical data so that you can use the vector database to do something along that line or? or any ideas yeah <laughs> i'm just curious thank you thank you thank you. it's a very interesting question so like you can see uh recently we have some graph foundation model so mm -hmm. like we can successfully fit the graphs into the uh into the foundation model and it can output some uh important uh, representations and some important uh, it can uh, have some interesting results. And also we can see that uh, there is also some uh, works on spatial temporal modeling um, for foundation model. So like we can generate some uh, um, like an, an knowledge to enhance our uh, our dynamic system modeling. So like we have different uh, um, different solutions like we will refer to these uh, different related works and uh, yeah so so at least uh, yeah if if you are interested in it you can uh, refer to some like foundation graph foundation models it's very it's a, now a very popular topic yeah and uh, and some like uh, foundation models for spatial temporal modeling it's also a very uh, um hot topic yeah, like you, uh, we we aim to use uh, similar, uh, start from the similar uh solutions. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. I, yeah, yeah. I I actually curious about like fine tuning for the large language model because if you're talking about fine tuning, you might have to have already have some data like a supervised or well labeled data set. Do you are you, uh, do you, so based on that. Uh, so is there any uh, so you already have the, uh, established uh, or any like data sets available to uh, in in some field or something uh i'm sorry we still, we uh we haven't built the um the data set now yeah but uh, uh in our future work like we will use all the pdb bank and we will feed a lot of proteins into the like the Cosmos software, and we can generate a lot of trajectories uh, for different proteins. Because you, you can see that uh, we have uh, uh, like thousands of like uh, thousands of proteins, so we can have thousands of uh, um of trajectories. 
yeah maybe yeah maybe more yeah so uh like we can um build our database you using like uh different proteins yeah okay thank you yeah thank you for your question so if there is no more questions uh, let's thank uh, dr luo for the wonderful presentation and uh, thank you for joining and hope you have a good rest of the day thank you thank you thank you